You saw the title. Let's talk about these young whippersnappers and how that dagnabbit auto-tune is ruining music. Hold on. Not that kind of video. I think there are some other people who have that sort of thing covered. I actually really like music technology and find it really inspiring, but it hasn't always been that way. Now, maybe this is something you can relate to. You make a four bar loop or a sequence that you really like and you think, that's really cool. I want to make something out of this. And then you sit there and you just listen to it over and over with really no idea where to go from there. I've certainly been there, but oddly enough, only fairly recently after I started making electronic music with more modern technology. Before that, I was fully immersed in the world of classical piano which I had been studying since the age of eight, went on to get a couple of degrees in it, and even had the opportunity to study composition in my master's degree. And around this time, instead of a sequencer, I was using a pencil and a paper and my piano. In fact, I didn't even know what a DAW was until about 2012, and certainly didn't realize that you're supposed to hate everyone who uses a different DAW than you do. It was a simpler time, really. And the real kicker, my music was better, at least at its core. So is music technology bad? Should I sell all of this stuff and just go back to writing at the piano with a pencil and paper? No, and maybe. Is music technology a tool or a crutch? I've heard people argue from both sides of the equation, and it's an almost impossible thing to answer because the choice is really up to you. It's up to me. It's up to the individual using it. A sequence or a loop can inspire a larger idea that you can flesh out. It can be the source of your inspiration. Ultimately, as composers, it's our job to take that fragment of an idea and develop that into something larger. And to do that, we need at least a basic understanding of form and structure and how to create variations and contrasting themes of an idea. Oh hi, I realize this is going to be partially dependent on what kind of music you're making, like my music is kind of neoclassical ambient with strong melodic tendencies and maybe slightly more traditional harmonic progressions, and I do love a good four on the floor beat just like the average middle-aged white guy, but I do think if you apply some of these concepts to almost any genre, it's really going to help move your listener emotionally if you're interested in that and not just moving them across the dance floor. So how in the world, once we have an idea, do we create variations of that idea? We can have new texture, we can have new dynamics, we can have new melodic content, we can have the sound itself change thanks to synthesis and sound design and all the tools at our disposal. We can have, okay, I think I see the problem. It's not writer's block or lack of ideas, it's overwhelm at having too many options. And since the world of music today is basically limitless in the amount of things that we can create and the tools that we have to do it, you're gonna have to place some limitations on yourself. And you've probably heard that but I'm gonna to try to give you some more practical examples. Maybe a lot of us got into music because we hate the idea of anyone placing rules upon us. We want to be rebels and not have any limitations whatsoever. But I think as you gain more maturity in the field and you start to work on the craft of composition more, you start to realize that limitations don't restrict your creativity. They actually focus it. They channel it into something usable. If you think about the musical scales and modes that are most common in Western music, those are just limitations that composers have used for centuries now to sort of guide their creativity. Try limiting yourself to only using two voices. Like if you have a synthesizer, only play two notes at a time. And what you'll find is that those two parts have to be much, much stronger and more independent than if you were just adding notes wherever you felt like it. Limit the rhythmic motion and only put faster rhythmic movement in places where you want to emphasize the melody because our ear is going to be naturally drawn to those moments. And by knowing when not to move, you know where to place that emphasis. Now, these limitations seem very simple to implement and in a way they are, and they will make your life easier and that you will have less overwhelm, but it will also make your life more difficult in the fact that your ideas will have to be stronger and be able to stand on their own. But if you take the time, for instance, to craft a well-designed melody, then when you start to build off of that foundation, you'll find that the whole thing comes to life in a much more satisfying way. The devil really is in the details, I suppose.
another way to kind of impose these self limitations and make sure that you're actually taking the time to craft your ideas is to write them down. Now, thanks to music technology, we can use MIDI roll or piano roll now. So you don't even actually have to be able to read musical notation. I don't think that's a requirement anymore. But whether you're using a pencil and staff paper like I used to use in the past, or if you're using MIDI piano roll in your DAW, putting your ideas in some sort of visual form will make you refine them as you go. It's kind of a self-editing process that requires you to take the time to think things through much in the same way as writing down a paragraph or an essay is different than just having a conversation. You choose every word much more meticulously and you can really articulate what you're going to say. As you continue to go through this careful planning process that is music composition, you'll find that you intuitively can start to do some of these things in a sort of almost automatic way. That's where improvisation comes in. You might start improvising an idea on whatever instrument you play, and you'll find that those improvisations have more intention than kind of the random meanderings that you did before. Now, I've developed sort of a bad habit over the last 10 years or so that I've been making and releasing my own recorded music of just recording an improvisation, not taking that as a opportunity to refine an idea in the compositional process, but just putting it out there. And sometimes that's fine. I actually think that improvisation is great and I think it's best used as a mining expedition where we find musical ideas, especially when we've taken the time to learn the craft of composition and can come up with better ideas more quickly. But there is still a pretty significant gap between improvisation and composition, in my opinion, because composition is the refinement of that mining expedition that we did before. Really going all in with the mineral analogy here. The issue with improvisation is we tend to revisit all of the same places that we've been before on our particular instrument, because part of playing any instrument is muscle memory. So once again, we could think of improvisation as just having a conversation with your friend, you're gonna use words that you've used before, and composition, once again, as writing down an essay or something where you're choosing every word carefully. So that's cool and everything, but it seems very basic. And how do we apply these things to sequences and loops and synthesizers and all of the tools that we have at our disposal today? Well, just like when you start to understand more about the basics of synthesis and it starts to unlock things for you in terms of sound design and you can then tweak presets to make them your own, the more we learn about the basics of compositional structure and form and how music is actually put together, the more we can break out of the four bar prison that we often find ourselves in. Even if we're using sequences and loops as inspiration, we are learning how to develop ideas. It's that old concept of giving someone a fish versus teaching them how to make their own fish idea. Me again. I think to put this simply in terms that relate to sequences and loops and music production, stop thinking of your loops as the end game or as a finished thought. They're not. They're just a part of an idea, like a piece to a puzzle. Personally, I still love lyrical melodies, and almost all of the most memorable ones are conversational. We may often refer to that as question and answer. This gives a melody natural shape and direction, and it really resonates with us as humans because it's how we communicate. So maybe that sequence or that four bar loop that you really love is just the question, and you need a compelling answer to go with that to make it feel like a finished thought. Even the most complex music written by the greatest masters of all time is just a series of little building blocks that they've taken and developed and switched around and moved around. They've tried different things, but you have to have really strong building blocks to begin with, and that's really the point of this video. You may have noticed that I didn't once talk about the circle of fifths or how this one chord will change your life forever. And that's because composition and music theory 
not the same thing even though you will see a lot of videos that confuse the two. Let's say that you asked an author that you really admire how they go about creating and crafting an idea and a narrative that holds your attention all the way through and has a satisfying yet unpredictable conclusion. And then they proceed to explain the difference between an adjective and an adverb. That's nice, but that's not really what you asked, is it? I'm not saying theory won't make your life easier. Just like it helps to know the basics of grammar in whatever language you're writing, it is helpful to know a little bit about musical grammar, and that's what music theory is. But theory is analytical. It's not creative, per se. So I think you can actually learn more, just like using the author analogy again, by reading and seeing how stories are put together and how they advance ideas and pace a story. And then, of course, actually trying and failing repeatedly at writing yourself until you get better. I've found lately, for me, what is working best is to use improvisation to get the initial ideas out of my brain and onto a piece of paper, where I can then refine them and swap things around using form and structure and develop my ideas. You could do the same thing by just recording sections and then you could swap them around in your DAW if you don't read music. And in this way, we can try different things. We can experiment, we can fail, we can get a little better each time until we have an iteration that we're really proud of. And we've broken out of just sitting there listening to the same four bar sequence over and over and over. I did put together a free ebook that actually goes into a little bit more detail about the things that I've discussed in this video. I have examples both of musical notation as well as MIDI roll so that if you just read MIDI roll you should feel pretty comfortable there. It's totally free. The only thing I ask for is your email address so that I can send you updates when I have more materials available and you can hear all of the news about that as quickly as I can get it out without having to worry about going through an algorithm. If you got any out of this video you can give it a like if you want to see more stuff like this or more stuff that's more in-depth about music technology and how I use it you can subscribe to this channel I'd love to do more stuff on composition as that is really more of my wheelhouse I've just never talked about it so much on this channel before so if you did enjoy this video leave me a comment and let me know or let me know what you would like to hear more of and I will see you next time